Hey everyone, Darryl here with Tested, and I'm back with the second part of the key build series that's inspired by the world of The Hobbit. In the previous video, I walked you through how I modeled the key in Cinema 4D. But in this video, I'll walk you through how I prepare that file to be printed on an SLA resin printer. Also, in this video, I'll be cleaning up the printer key and preparing it for molding. So one thing I want to be very transparent about is that I haven't made many two-part molds. This is actually my second two-part mold. I don't have much experience in making two-part molds. So I do want you to keep in mind while watching this video is that I am learning how to make molds, and you guys are actually watching the process of me learning. So I'm excited to get started. Let's jump right in. So hey guys, we're back at the computer. I already have the file loaded into um, Autodesk Mesh Mixer. And this is the program that I'm gonna be utilizing to hollow out the key. So this way we can print it on the resin style printer. And the reason why we're hollowing this out is because we do not want to, number one, waste resin. Resin is pretty expensive. So printing this key solid, just wouldn't be cost effective and it'll just be easier print if we print this hollow so we're going to hollow this key out we're going to also add some holes to it so this way the resin can um, escape from the key as it's printing go ahead and select the key and it's really simple we'll go ahead and hit hollow and then it'll start to um, automate the hollowing process and just give it a minute all right and then it's showing us what it looks like once it's hollowed out and let's generate some holes so this is going to allow the resin to escape. So for this, I'm going to strategically put the holes in an area where I know I can reach to be able to fill it in once we get ready to clean it up. I'm widening the holes to ensure that the alcohol that I use to clean this print up actually gets into the inside of this key and also so that the resin gets um, cleaned out from the inside. So this is good. I'm going to accept and we'll give it a minute to run. All right, so we have our key with the holes and it's hollowed out. And we're gonna export this out. We're gonna export this out and we're gonna bring it into another program so that we can add the uh, support that's needed to print this. Now we can do it in Mesh Mixer, but I prefer to do it in a different program. So let's head over to that program and then I'll show you how we automate that process in terms of adding the supports. So here is the uh, program that I was referring to. It has a nice auto support generator in here. So I'm gonna utilize that. But first I wanna turn the key on a 45 degree angle. And then I'm going to go ahead and run the automated supports. I am choosing to print it this way because I know the supports are gonna be running along the bottom here. And I'm gonna try and keep them along the middle portion of the key here. So I'm going to go ahead and auto support. And we'll let this run and we'll come back once the supports have been added. All right, so all the supports have been added. I added a few extra supports along the um, up portion of the key here and then some along the sides. Because when it was finished, the automatic supports only added it towards the bottom here, which is what I wanted. But I wanted to ensure that some of the parts had some supports. So I added some supports up here and along the sides here. I'm going to export this out to Cura, and then Cura will go ahead and slice it. And then we will have a G-code, and we'll take that G-code to the SLA printer, have it printed, and I'll come back and show you guys what I have when it's all printed. So I'm printing this key on my Moai from Piopoli, and for this print, I decided to use Piopoli's black resin from Matahackers. This is a UV-sensitive resin that requires it to be cured under a UV light. I also chose black because it stated by the manufacturer that black and gray have the best resolutions and I wanted to ensure that I did not lose any detail. Once the print was done, I removed all the supports and allowed it to cure under a UV light for a few hours. Here are the results. Unlike a traditional FDM style printer, the resin print has little to no print lines and require minimal cleanup. I wanted to ensure that I had a smooth surface and I also needed to remove the stubs left behind from the supports. Sometimes with resin prints, sagging may occur. I did have some sagging towards the back of the key which requires some sanding to get the original shape back. Because this is a softer resin, I started off with 320 grit sanding paper. The goal of the first pass was to knock back the stubs left behind from the supports and to reshape the back of the key as you can see here. I utilized the surface of my workbench to get a nice flat finish. 
In addition, I also used a popsicle stick with sandpaper wrapped around it to not only get a flat and even finish, but to reach into some of the smaller areas. I also used the popsicle stick method on smaller parts of the key. The holes we made to release resin from the print needed to be filled, so I mixed up equal parts of epoxy scope and proceeded to fill the holes. Once the holes were filled, I used some water to smooth and feather out everything. I decided to polish up the key a bit before starting the molding process. All right, time to begin this two-part mold process. I had some foam board, so I decided to use that as my surface. Okay, so here I am using oil-based clay in order to build up my surface to the halfway point of the key. I utilize sculpting tools to help get into the smaller areas and to help get a nice flat surface. I also use one of my sculpting tools to create registration holes in the clay. Once the clay was ready, I cut up some foam board to hot glue in place around the clay to act as walls for when I pour in the silicone. I also applied hot glue around the outer edges of the box to seal off any openings or gaps and to ensure that I do not have any leaks. Finally, I sprayed some mold release and allowed it to dry while I mixed up silicone. For this build, I decided to use Smooth-On's Mold Star 30. The silicone has a one-to-one -one mix ratio of parts A and B, so I poured out even parts in separate cups and proceeded to mix. According to the manufacturer's technical bulletin, it is not necessary to place the mixed silicone into a vacuum degassing chamber. Although this was an extra step, I opted to place the silicone in a vacuum chamber to ensure that I would not have any air bubbles. I placed the mixed silicone into the pot, turned it on, and allowed the silicone to be vacuumed. Once it was done, I removed the silicone from the pot and it was time to pour. To reduce the chances of introducing air bubbles from pouring, I pour the silicone in at the lowest point of the mold. This silicone has a demold time of 6 hours in a 73 degree room temperature. Because it was cold in my garage, I allowed it to cure overnight to avoid demolding the mold prematurely. The next day, the mold was ready to be opened. In addition, I created a simple one part mold for the additional parts of the key, as you can see to the right of the screen. After removing the clay and giving the mold a quick trim of the excess silicone, I sprayed a bit of mold release and repeated the process of building the box and pouring the silicone for the second part of the mold. I again allow this to cure overnight. And here is the two part mold, all ready for resin casting.
So thank you all for tuning in. I hope you really enjoyed the video. The next and last part of the series will be doing the casting and resin. And we'll probably also do a cold cast and I'll show you how I go about polishing it up to make it look like it was casted in real metal. Once again, thank you all for tuning in. Peace and love. God bless.